Welcome folks, Jason here to walk you through using and creating guides in Illustrator, as well as understanding how smart guides can really work for you. Here I've got some simple content on the page. And if you've ever used Illustrator, you may have noticed when you begin to move items around the page, you get these little kind of lasers shooting out next to, on top of, in the middle of your content as you're moving it around. Those are smart guides. If you don't see your smart guides, let's go into the view menu and we're going to go down to turn on smart guides. Make sure it's checked. It should be by default. What are smart guides? What do they do? And how can they help you? Well, from the very simple standpoint of using smart guides, when you're drawing any content, say we start off with a square, you'll notice when I draw, when I get something that is a perfect square, you'll see that I will get that angled magenta line showing me when I have a perfect square. Now I can also get a perfect square by holding down my shift key when I'm drawing. But if you don't hold down your shift key, you can easily get a rectangle or a square, but that smart guide will snap from the upper left to the lower right, showing me when I have a perfect square. If I jump over and draw an ellipse, you'll notice when I draw the ellipse, and if it's an oval, I won't get my line showing me that it's a perfect circle, but once I get my content perfect, being height and width exactly the same, you will see my lines vertical and horizontal showing me that I am snapping to a perfect circle. And again, I can make sure it remains a perfect circle by holding the shift key down when I draw. If I don't hold the shift key down, I have to make sure it snaps right to that point where I get the vertical and horizontal to constrain that to a perfect circle. So that's how smart guides can help me draw. But if I go back to my selection tool, you'll notice when I start to move content around, I will see smart guides helping me out. And these smart guides are helping me align the object that I'm moving to the other objects on the page or the page itself. So as I move my green circle around, you'll notice that it will snap to the center of the object up above and I get a line from the center of the object up above to the object that I'm moving. If I move them to the right sides or the left sides, they will snap to that position as well. The more content you have on the page, the more smart guides you're going to see those objects snapping to. And those objects will snap to the top, bottom, left, right, or center of any and all the objects on the page. So now my circle is centered to the square on the right, it is now flush with the bottom of the square on the right, and so on. Now as I move this content around, this makes it super easy for me to, say, center all my content without really paying much attention to anything else on the page. Now another unique feature of the Smart Guides is also the distance between things. You'll notice as I was dragging this and I begin to move it up, I get these little distance markers between my top square my middle square, and then my bottom circle. And this only works when you have three objects or more, and then it starts finding the relationship between these objects, and you can then distance everything exactly the same. You will also get this if you duplicate an object. I'm gonna hold down my Option or Alt key, and I'm going to drag. When I'm dragging something, if I want it to remain perfectly in line, say on the horizontal axis here, you'll see the line coming out from the center of the object that I'm duplicating, and then the duplicate object. Now I can get this by holding down my shift key, but here my smart guide is showing me when I duplicate this, I'm duplicating it along that exact same axis. No higher, no lower. It's kind of snapping to that particular line. If I hold my Option or Alt key down again, and I begin to pull my third instance of this object, you will see that line will come out from the center. It's helping me snap to that, so I have it perfectly in line with the others. And then I get my little space indicators in between those objects, showing me that the distance is exactly the same. So smart guides can happen everywhere in relation to objects, but also in relation to the page itself. So I'm going to remove some of these objects, and I'm going to get down to one object, and I would like to put this in the center of the page. And you can see if I do this, it's going to snap right to the center vertically. And then if I get to the horizontal center right there, I'm right in the middle of the page. It shows me right where I am. And it's super cool. 
If you ever want to move something, you'll notice when you move it, you can get that horizontal or vertical, and it shows you that you're on the same plane as you go. Now, if you'd like to create your own guides on the page for any reason, you're going to need your rulers. Under the View menu, you're going to go down to Rulers, and you're going to show the rulers. Rulers are going to show up here, and one little side note, if you ever want to change the units of measure while you're working in Illustrator, one of the easiest ways to do it is to go to your ruler, right-click on your ruler, and you can change your ruler increments just by right-clicking and choosing from the list. In order to create manual guides on the page, you have to have your rulers on, and you're going to take your cursor, click from the ruler, and you're going to drag a guide onto the page. And you can drag multiple guides onto the page if you'd like to set up guides. The guides are cyan, and when you drop them on the page, they automatically lock on the page. So if I move my guides, if I want a vertical guide, I'm going to go from my vertical ruler, and I can bring my guides onto the page. Now once they're there, you can't move them because they are locked. So if you go under the View menu, and you go under Guides, you can see the Unlock Guides feature. Once you unlock the guides, that allows you to then select them, and then you can move those guides any place that you want. If you'd like to delete a guide, you can go in and you can right-click, and you can hide a guide, or because we've already unlocked it and you'd like to release this, you can go and you can select it, and then simply hit your Delete key and get rid of that guide. Because the guides are now unlocked, you can always right-click and choose Lock Guides, which will lock them. Now, one other unique feature that we have with Illustrator is your ability to make your own guides and not necessarily horizontal or vertical. So these guides are great because you can then put them on your artwork wherever you want them to be. You can also turn these guides on and turn them off by going into the View menu, under Guides, and you can simply show or hide guides. And that is going to be command or control semicolon. So you can turn those on, turn those off, just like that. Now, what happens if you'd like to make guides at a different angle? Say I'd like to go in and I'd like to make guides at a 45 degree angle. You can draw any shape or line, and here I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm going to hold down my shift key to constrain it at a 45 degree angle. Then with that line active, I'm going to go into the View menu, I'm going to go under Guides, and with that active object, I'm going to choose Make Guides. It will now turn that into a guide for me. And then if I'd like to line up my content on the guide, I can take my objects or shapes and put them right on the guide there. And of course, I could duplicate them and snap those to the guide in order to go ahead and get those shapes right along that particular guide. Anything can be turned into a guide. If you have a shape and you'd like that to be turned into a guide, you can draw your shape. And then with my selection tool, I'm going to go into the View menu, Guides, and say Make Guides. And it becomes a guide for you. If you want to release those guides, you can always hover over that guide. Your Smart Guide will show you that this is a guide. You can right-click or go under the View menu, and you can unlock them or hide those guides and then be able to manipulate those guides quite easily. So guides can be set up very easily on a document. Now usually when I set up guides, I will go into my Layers panel. So I go under my Window layer, window Menu, go under Layers, and I would normally end up putting my guides on a layer by itself. Why? Well, because it's easier when I'm working to turn on and turn off the layer with the guides on it than it is turning on and turning off my guides if I ever forget that shortcut. But you can build guides in a separate layer very easily. So if you're on that particular layer and you pull guides down on the, that layer, you can see when you turn off that layer, those guides can turn on and turn off. It's just a different way to be able to work. Guides don't print, but they're there for you to be able to work with. Now, snapping to those guides when you're working in a document, the typical snap area is four points, which means if you get within four points of that guide, it's automatically going to snap to them. 
Now, if we go into the view menu, in order to make sure that you snap to that, you want to make sure that with your guides, you want to make sure that you are going to choose your snap to. Now, the snap to the point, if we have that turned on, is then going to allow us to snap to our guides so that we've, if we get within a four point area of that guide, it's going to snap right to it. If you do not have your snap to turned on, you'll find when you're creating content here, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get it to actually snap to. There's different types of snap to. There's snap to the grid, which is an underlying grid that you can turn on. When you're doing icons or very controlled work, we use this. We can snap to the pixel if we're creating any artwork that's going to be for video or web, and we want to make sure it's pixel perfect. But in this case, I'm more concerned about my construction and snapping to the points, which is also snapping to the guides. So I turn that on so that my guides are going to work the way I want them to. If you don't have that snap to point, you'll find that you can very easily overrun the guides and it doesn't get right to that guide. So snap to point is something very important after you create your guides. Under the preferences menu, under illustrator, if you're on a PC, it's going to be under the edit menu. I'm going to go to preferences and I'm going to go to guides and grid. Here under the guides and grid, you can set the color of your guides. Here they're cyan and you can see that you can change those. You can have them be lines, which they are by default, or you can have them be dots. If you go to smart guides, you can control the color of the smart guides and how and when those smart guides are going to show up. This is also where your tolerance can be set. Here, if your object gets within four points of another object or an existing guide, it's going to snap to it. If you'd like less tolerance, you're going to lower that number so that it's you have to be closer. Or if you're working quickly, you can increase this number so you can be farther away and have it snap to your guides. So completely editable. But guides are one of those things that make life so much better when you're trying to align and distribute and create content and not have to worry about spacing these things out. 